but it's also a hymn sung by the Israelites. And the story behind the Psalms is that every once a year, all the physically abled Israelites would make a journey to, the, to Jerusalem for the Passover. And this journey was um, definitely far from being easy because you can only imagine what these travelers faced back then. Um, hot, dusty days, steep mountain paths, everlasting hills, sunburns, bug bites, and probably even thieves waiting alongside the road to um, steal their valuables. And unlike today, without no cars, no AC, and probably not enough food or water to sustain them for the whole journey, you can, you can see why the journey would be def- difficult. So the words of um, Psalms 121 speaks directly into the conditions they had faced in this journey. But yet this Psalms isn't about the Israelites um, whining or even complaining about how harsh and treacherous this journey was, but rather it, um, it acknowledges that there is, a, there is a person who protects mankind when they are in trouble. And that person who protects us is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And um, this just goes to show that God, he doesn't sleep on the job, you know, nor does he let your first I mean, foot slip as verse three goes. And he shades us during the day and um, he protects us at night, verse five. And he also promises us to keep, promises us to keep us from all harm and watch over your life. And um, especially for these Israelites who have to go through so much to arrive at Jerusalem for the Passover, to hear verses three and four, which says, um, he will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. So for the Israelites to hear this, this was sort of like music to their ears because as verse one goes, all those people on the journey look up to the mountains for their help. And where does it come from? And that answer is in verse two, which says their help comes from the Lord, the one and only creator of our heavens and our earth. And so um, this psalm shows us the trust and faith we need to have in God to guide us through the toughest roads of our life. And even if that means sacrificing things for the good of the relationship with God. And, um, and if you really, really think about it, you know, how different are we from those Israelites who lived more than 2,020 years ago? Because they needed help and so do we every single moment of our lives. And especially today with all the, um, with the pandemic going around and with all the natural disasters happening, you know, it can be hard for all of us to have a grip on our lives. But moments like these are exactly why Sam's 121 is around, because it says the Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. So, you know, whatever you may be facing in your life, just um, be sure to kneel down in prayer and ask for God's guidance. But, um, but the thing with prayer, I think, is... Um, one thing God always asks of us asks of us in return is to have patience because ninety five percent of our time our timetables won't likely match with god's timetables because God has a perfect time for everything and in the meantime when you're waiting for that, get down on your needs and not only pray for your needs but you pray for other people's needs as well and you know it might be for a friend that's struggling with something or maybe it's a family member that's going through something, but whatever it is, just always know it's important to have trust in the Lord because it says in the word that um, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. So, you know, what, what does it mean to trust God? And that me- it means to surrender everything you have. So you can be, a f- you can f- be free of anything that's holding you back from him. And, um, you know, most people these days tend to make learning to trust God more of more into a mystery when it really isn't because God's greatest sacrifice to us 2020 years ago when he died on that cross should be all the more reason why we should believe and hope in him when all hope is gone and it's only after you put that hope and trust and faith in him that God will only take you into his arms with open grace and you know just always remember that God's ready to take you in all he's waiting for you is to um, completely surrender to him and um, there's a verse, actually, it's Galatians 2.20, and it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave his life for me. So just remember um, that God lives in you, so turn to him anytime you need help, anytime you're going through something that you can't overcome. And um, take, for example, King David, you know, he fought about eight to nine battles over the course of his life. And he won, I'm pretty sure he won every single one of them. And people were amazed. 
of his skills and, and his power to overcome his enemies. And, um, and he even beat his own son, Absalom, who wanted to take over his throne in battle. You know, what was his secret? And um, his secret was to um, turn to God every time before a battle and ask him for his guidance and control over his army so he can beat his enemies. So, so it was only then when David would become courageous and strong and go on to beat his enemies in battle. And just like David, I know we're all fighting our own battles in life. And it's important that we turn to God for his guidance and counsel so that we can have the courage and bravery like David to beat our own battles in life and to trust in God more and put our faith, hope, and trust in him. And so with that, I'm going to end. And I hope what I said today invoked something in your hearts. And uh, just always remember the church and trust God. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jacob, uh, for your amazing uh, exhortation and sharing from the Word of God.